Good afternoon and welcome to Our Lady of Grace. We have one announcement for today. Um, so next Sunday, following the 1030 Mass, we will have a social event in Albany's Hall, Christmas around the world. Food, crafts, and games will be provided from four European countries, Italy, Sweden, Germany, and Poland. Be sure to take a bulletin home for details. All are welcome. Um, all of our music for today can be found in the brown hymnal. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 193, The King Shall Come. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end, her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. 
A voice cries out, In the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of great glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. He is reward, here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be? 
conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in, clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. In a cartoon in the New York Times magazine, God is seated, staring intently at the laptop screen before him with a surprised look on his face. And the caption below reads, God finds all the prayers of mankind in his spam folder. To which some of us might add, so that's why he's ignoring me. Some years ago, it was reported that a father had his four-year-old son baptized 26 times in three years. And when he was asked by a reporter why he had done this, the father answered, well, it's very simple. Each new godfather was good for at least one loan. Someone has said that the world is kind of like a spiritual kindergarten 
where millions of bewildered infants are trying to spell God with the wrong blocks. And that father is probably a good example, perhaps, of one of those bewildered people who live in their own spiritual kindergarten. He didn't deny God, but he tried to manipulate God. And that's something that we must all guard against, particularly in our prayer life. When we come to God with our own preconceived monologue of what he ought to do for us, then we are trying to spell God with the wrong blocks, so to speak. All too often our petitions to God take on the form of a monologue as though we are talking to ourselves introspectively. And when that is the case, we have only ourselves to blame if our prayers end up in God's spam folder. But when we condition ourselves to become constantly aware of God's presence in our lives, then we transform the monologue into a dialogue a dialogue with God, and then that changes everything. It was once said that we need to realize that our talking to God is not just a one-way street. We talk to him and we want him to talk back to us in some way. In today's gospel lesson, St. Mark tells us that John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. John the Baptist was preparing his followers for the coming of God's supreme gift, the sheer act of grace that would radically change their perspective on life and even their, their experience of life both. John the Baptist was proclaiming the good news of salvation. John the Baptist was proclaiming the good news that Jesus Christ had come to set them free. John was proclaiming the good news that the Lord Jesus who came into the world not as a bearer of God's supreme gift, but as the gift himself. Repent is the word John the Baptist used to prepare his followers to accept the freedom that Jesus was offering. He was telling them, he was telling them how to prepare to accept God's gift of new life in Jesus Christ. He exhorted them to acknowledge complete and absolute dependence on God, not only for life, but for the very way of life. John was laying it all out for his people. The attitude of repentance is the necessary preparation for acceptance of the Lord Jesus into their lives. They must be prepared in turn so that they can turn their lives upside down, so to speak and reorder their priorities in order to experience the wonder and the joy of salvation. It seems that a seminary professor one day greeted his first new young students with the following assignment. He said, study the various schools of thought down through the ages and determine if it is possible to prove through reason alone that God exists. And for weeks, those students waded through the heavy philosophical volumes of Immanuel Kant and Thomas Aquinas and many others, struggling to grasp their concepts. But it wasn't easy going. And when the time arrived for that first test, they felt, felt almost ill-prepared. And then on the morning of the schedule of this big exam, the professor announced that it had been postponed for two weeks. 
whereupon one of the anxiety-ridden students breathed a sigh of relief and exclaimed, that proves there is a God. And now implied in that student's remark is a kind of built-in understanding that the compassion of God is the ultimate proof of his existence. And of course, the Lord Jesus comes to us as the chief example of God's compassion. In today's gospel lesson, John the Baptist traveled the entire region of the River Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance. Someone is following me, someone who is more powerful than I am, and I am not even fit to kneel down and undo the strap of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And with these words, John was preparing his followers for the coming of God's supreme gift, the sheer act of grace that would radically change their perspective on life and their experience of life both. There was once a wise old piano teacher who taught scores of students over the years. And invariably, she prepared her pupils for recitals, and she would encourage them to prepare for the endings over and over and over again. And invariably, the students would grumble because of the constant repetition of the last few measures of the music. And when the complaints came, the teacher would answer, you can make a mistake at the beginning, you can make a mistake in the middle, and in some other place along the way, but all will be forgotten when you manage to make the ending glorious. We wait, we prepare. The hours drag by. And our petitions to God take on the form of a monologue as though we are talking to ourselves introspectively. And we have only ourselves to blame if our prayers end up in God's spam folder. But when we condition ourselves to become constantly aware of God's presence in our lives, then we again convert that monologue into a dialogue, a dialogue with God. And that is a preparation that always results in glorious endings. Flooded with a sense of God's immediate presence, we realize that our hours of waiting have been preparation for a minute that will change us forever the coming of God's supreme gift of salvation. And so in today's gospel lesson, St. Mark is telling us that John the Baptist traveled the entire region of the River Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance, saying in effect, God wants you to know that you are saved. And with eyes anew, God wants you to rise above the dust in the ashes of ordinary existence. God has given you the means to see life from an entirely new dimension. And so repent, change. And as we move deeper into the Advent season of preparation for the coming of the Lord, may each and every one of you enter into a genuine dialogue with God. And in so doing, you will indeed be prepared for a truly, a truly glorious ending. May God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit,
believers incarnate the Virgin Mary and became men. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the Lord. Confident in the Father's love, mercy, and compassion, let us now bring our prayers and petitions before him. Our response will be, Emmanuel, hear us. For all members of the church, may God work with us in a greater conversion of mind and heart in order to be better instruments of his love in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Emmanuel, for all those throughout the world who do not know Jesus, may they encounter him through our words and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Emmanuel, for those who are homeless, may they find shelter through the outreach of others and comfort in God's love for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Emmanuel, for our parish family, May each of us prepare the way of the Lord in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all those who put themselves in harm's way to protect, defend, and rescue those in need, may God keep them safe as they carry out their duties. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all our faithful departed, including Felicia, Sue, and Teresa Cost, May they rest in the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Emmanuel, hear us. God of mercy and compassion, we offer our prayers to you in faith. We ask that you grant them according to your holy will, through Christ our Lord. Please join in singing hymn number 196, O Come Divine Messiah.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ and come with him to share in our eternal Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and become our spiritual bread. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your <coughs> Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, 
in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope, Benedict our retired Pope, and Edward our Bishop, retired Bishop Lawrence. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, St. John the 23rd, St. John Paul the Second, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. And especially for Felicia, Sue, and Teresa Cox. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the same
Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking of this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and to hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. As you run the race of this present life, may, you, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity, so that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Please join in singing our closing hymn, number 289, Sing Out Earth and Skies. Mm -hmm. 